Book of Acts, chapter 20, from verse, 70, uh, verse 17, please. And then verse 28 to 31. From Miletus, or Miletus, Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. Amen? Verse 28. Therefore, take heed to yourself, the elders, and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage, wolves, or savage, huh? savage, savage, wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Amen? Hallelujah. The theme of this, the title of this topic is the biblical functions of the elders or pastors. The biblical functions or responsibilities or duties. And the theme is faithfulness in the office. It is what God is requiring us. Faithfulness in the office. Apostle Paul was dismissing the church at Ephesus. Amen? And he gathered the elders. Remember that I taught you last week, excuse me, on Friday night, that the, at the beginning of the early church, it was a fact that the government in local churches was compounded by a group of elders. Amen? As we have read in this part of the scripture, Paul called the elders because they were in charge of the church. But this same Ephesus church who had at the beginning elders, later Paul delegated authority over just one main pastor. And it was Timothy who remained some months and years in that local church in Ephesus, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3, says, For that reason I left you in Ephesus. Hallelujah. As I urge you, when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Amen? And remember that Timothy was in charge. Amen? To select bishops or elders or pastors and he gave the requirements in chapter 3 but in chapter 5 we realize that Timothy had pastoral authority over the elders it means over the other pastors verse chapter 5 verse 20 verse 17 says let the elder who rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, right? The elders. And verse 20 says, Those, speaking about the elders, who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all the other elders. Not the other con the, the, the congregation, but the other elders. That is the context, right? So it means that Apostle Paul delegated authority on Timothy. Over the elders or pastors of that efficient church. Are you getting the point, my brothers and sisters? In Revelation chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says that in the year 100 AD, Amen, John wrote a letter, the Revelation, to the main pastor in Ephesus. Amen. And Bible says, right unto the pa and to the angel in Ephesus, these things. It is my introduction. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now, 
we are going to see five points in this message. This is the structure of my message today. The first point is the first and main duty of the pastors in general. And it is to take heed of himself. Acts 20 verse 28, please. Hallelujah. Notice, Apostle Paul guarded the elders. And the first commandment or demand, he says, Therefore, take heed to yourselves. That is the main duty of a pastor. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Amen. Take heed of yourselves. Look at me, please. That's why it is very important to have authorities over us. Because of that main reason. You know, because evil is in us. The evil is not only in the believers, bodies and beings, not. It's in the pastor as well. Could you understand? That's why the main duty before the pastor preach to others, before the pastor advise others, the pastor have has a responsibility before God and it is to take heed of himself. Why? Because evil is in us. You see the point, my brothers and sisters? Evil is in us. That is a fact. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16 and it is the same advice that Apostle Paul gave to Timothy, the young pastor in that church. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, uh, 16. What the Bible says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine continuing them for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Amen. That's why Apostle Paul says that I submit this body, my flesh. Amen. In order to finish the race. Otherwise, I would be a banner or a standard for others and I myself will be cast away. Romans chapter 9. Have you read that? Amen? Could you understand my brothers and sisters? What profit me to preach to a big church and plenty people and at the end of my life I will be cast away. I will form the group of those once that Jesus mentioned in Matthew 7, in that day, many will say to me, in thy name I cast out demons, in thy name I prophesy, I perform miracles, but I will say to them, I don't know you. Depart from me, labors of iniquity. Because iniquity is in me. And I have to control myself. My heart is deceitful. My tongue is, could you understand, is evil. Pride can take my heart and dominate me. Not only sexual sins. Love of money can dominate my heart. Prestige. Can you praise the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Three F's are 
are my enemy. Fortune, fame, and female ones. You understand? I have to be very careful with myself. Amen? Take heed to yourself, Timothy, and the doctrine. By doing it, continuing them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Look at me, my brothers. Because I am wicked in my nature. Amen? It doesn't mean that, I, that God imputed me the sin of Adam as that false doctrine says. Not, I inherited and fallen nature. And it is a fact. Amen? Weakness is inside of me. I have to control it by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 13 says that I have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, Bible says I have to crucify the works of the flesh in me. Jesus himself said to me, if you want to follow me, deny yourself. Amen? That's why it's very important to have authority over me. Because the authorities can help me. In case if I am going astray. Who helped Peter? Who helped Peter when he went astray? It was not Jesus. But Jesus went to heaven after that. And who helped Peter again when he went astray? Remember that he behaved as a Pharisee? Eating with the Gentiles. But as soon as the Pharisees who believed in the gospel. But they believed that to be saved beside the faith in Christ. They should, people should uh, circumcise. Bible says that Peter used to withdraw himself far away from them. And Paul says that attitude is a hypocrite attitude is to be condemned by it. Who helped Peter again? Someone in authority. Why? Because Peter was in charge of the Jews. While Paul was in charge of the Gentiles. And as soon as Paul saw that attitude, Paul exhorted, rebuked Peter. Because we have to take heed of ourselves as a pastors. I need someone who helps me. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, my brothers and sisters. Could you understand? Very important. Amen. <coughs> Contability. That is the main and first duty of the pastors. To take heed of ourselves. As a consequence of that, we will be example to the grave. You see the point? Because if I preach something, I have to live it first. How am I going to preach you, congregation, about prayer if the pastor does not pray? How the pastor is going to preach you holiness if the pastor is not holy? How the pastor is going to preach you any topic? Amen? That's why in many pulpits, the battle against sin is quiet. 
Because if I am in sin, I don't have authority to preach. I am not an example for the flock. Do you understand my brothers and sisters? That's why people or some elders, pastors, don't preach against worldliness and cleanness. Because they are not example. They are involved in it. First Peter chapter 2, verse chapter 5, please. Verse 5 says, the elders who are among you, I exhort. And verse 2 says, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willing, willingly, not for dishonest gain, but agently, nor as being lords of those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Amen. Could you understand my brothers and sisters? It is the first and main duty of the pastors to take heed of ourselves in order to have authority and to be example to the congregation. You may praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Second point of my message or duty of the pastors, let's go back to Acts chapter 20, verse 28, is to take heed of the flock of the Lord. To take heed to all the flock. Amen. After taking heed of myself, I have authority to take heed because that is biblical. How I am going to remove the moat of your eye when I have a beam in my eye? <laughs> you see the point, my brothers and sisters? Amen. And Apostle Paul says, which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. And the reason why Apostle Paul said to, to the elders of Ephesus was this, verse 29, For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, also from among yourselves men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Apostle Paul says, be careful. You have to take heed of the flock. Don't allow the flock to fall into the hands of wolves. Amen? And Apostle Paul was not referring to animals. Was referring to preachers, teachers, with wrong doctrines. Amen? That's why I have to take care of every member of the congregation. Today we have... Uh, Free access to media. Right? And that's why many apostatate in churches. Because they have free access to videos, messages in YouTube. Amen? And some people prefer to hear those people and to receive the word of God directly from the Bible because they are lazy to read the Bible to compare to know if that preacher is saying the truth or even they are lazy to ask the pastors that is true pastor 
I heard a message in radio, in TV. Praise the Lord for the ones who do it. But it's my responsibility to take heed to the flock from the wolves. Remember, the wolves will not come saying, oh. No, no, they, they, they will come saying, Meh. Like a sheep. It means, quoting right verses of the Bible, speaking good about the doctrine, but after that, the poison. The poison. If the believer has not the complete counsel of God in their minds and hearts, they don't have enough, could you understand, information to discern if it is right or not. Amen? I was criticized by someone this week. And he, she wrote in, in my world, in Facebook, you always looking for false prophets in everywhere. You should be on the streets preaching the gospel. Don't lose your time. Wow, she gave me orders. Praise God that Jesus came first and said to me, go into the world. And that's why I'm here into that. Amen. <laughs> but I saw her profile and she is not. <laughs> you know. Can you praise the name of Jesus? Amen. And you know why she said that? Because I wrote an article saying that someone said that God hates the sinners. And that person quote Psalm chapter 5 verse 7 in a wrong way. And I explain in my article in, with hermeneutics and exegesis. Amen. But David didn't mean all sinners. But the ones who tried to kill him or to hinder the coming of Jesus Christ through him. They are the ones that the Lord hates. Because the wrath of God will be upon the ones who reject Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Amen. But the people who don't have the enough information fall in the hands of these wolves. Do you understand my brothers and sisters? Amen. And I have asked some people who, who are deceived. Have you read the Bible? They have not read the Bible. But they have watched those videos. They have the, the collection. But they have not read the Bible. Amen. Could you understand my brothers and sisters? That's why it is my duty to preach these topics to you. To gratify you that they are wolves. Even when they say as a sheep. Be. said be careful inside of it there is a wolf can you praise the name of Jesus yeah. amen <clears throat> hallelujah and you know most of these people who write articles on internet they don't have a church they are independent preachers and are against to, to give tithes, to attend a congregation, to be subject to a, a, a pastor. And why they do it? Because they don't practice it. Amen? And they are against the right doctrines of the Bible saying that it is a heresy. But check their lives. They don't have authorities over them. They don't give ties. They don't, they are not accountable to anyone. 
you understand, my brothers and sisters? Be careful. Amen? Be careful. And some people pretend to be lovers of all. And they say, no, it's a new you know, doctrine. What is the problem if the Lord, God is not going to reject it? They speak good about God or something about this. But let me show you that doctrines, amen, doctrines can make people go astray. Number one. And secondly, God hates doctrines against his pure word. Go to Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I have few things against you. Against you who? Verse 12 says to the angel of the church in Pergamos. Right? And verse 14 says, but I have few things against you. But the pastor, because you have there in your congregation those, a group of people who hold the doctrine of Balaam. Do you understand? That pastor in Pergamos used to be a uh, charismatic pastor to please everyone to say do not worry you may remain in church I agree with your doctrine or maybe I disagree but there is no problem I feel I have few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaita, Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Jesus hate those doctrines. Abraham's doctrine is to make money with the gospel. Amen? And Nicola, Nicolaitan's doctrine is ecumenism. Amen? I, the, the, the word Nicolaitan's is rendered from the Greek in two parts. Amen? I don't remember exactly, but it says Nico, Nico it means to conquer. Amen. Lightens peoples. Amen. It means the unity of all religions. God hates that doctrine. Amen. Can you praise the name of Jesus? What the Bible says in verse 16. Repent, pastor. Or else I will come to you quickly and I will fight against them with my sword of my mouth. In other words, what Jesus was telling him, this pastor, repent. Do something in that congregation. If you don't do it, I will go. It means I will take one of my faithful pastors and to preach. To fight against them with the sword. It means with my word. Amen? Because there are some people who say, Pastor, don't speak against them. If I follow you and obey you, I am not obeying Jesus. Jesus said to me, repent. If you don't do it, I will send another pastor because that is my flock. And I will, you know, fight against the ones who hold the doctrine of Balaam and the Nicolaitans. Can you praise the name of Jesus? Clear, my brother. Amen.
1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 3, Apostle Paul said to Timothy, uh, you were left in charge of Ephesus church in order, I want you to read. That you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. It's the duty of the pastor to protect the flock from the enemies who are preaching another gospel in Ephesus. Second Timothy chapter and Bible says verse. 19 chapter 1 verse 19 having faith and good conscience which some having rejected concerning the faith it means the doctrine have suffered shipwreck of whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander whom I deliver to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme notice Hymenaeus and Alexander were preachers teachers but apostle Paul says I put them away from the congregation authorities accountability that's why I say to you when there is not accountability nobody is going to remove those elders and Hymenaeus in Ephesus was preaching a Gnostic doctrine and that doctrine you know I preached to you already but let me remind you Hymenaeus used to say that Jesus Christ was not coming. In eschatology, he mixed eschatology with soteriology. And he says, Jesus Christ is not coming. And why Hymenaeus based his belief in this? Because the resurrection of the dead took place already. And people used to ask him, how? In the day when the believer who was dead in sins and trespasses believed and was resurrected in that moment, Christ came to that person. It makes sense if we were living in those days. <laughs> you know? Go to Second Timothy chapter 2. Verse 14 says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words, to not profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Verse, verse 15, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Verse 16, but shun profane and idol babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Verse 17, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus spread that message like a cancer inside of the Ephesian church. Amen. And Philetus are of the sort who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Look at me, please. As a pastor, it is my duty to charge in the congregation to everyone not to teach another doctrine amen can you praise the name of Jesus amen it's my duty my brothers and sisters don't feel offended if I have to correct you it's my duty before the Lord because in doing it you will be saved and the ones who hear you Amen. 
that's why the duty of the pastor or elder is to preach and to teach. First Timothy chapter 1, chapter 5, please. Verse 17. Are you understanding the message? Verse 17, let the elders who rule, elders or pastors who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. It means in the preaching and teaching. Amen? That is my duty, to preach you and to teach you doctrine, giving instructions, amen, and explaining to you why they are wrong. This is my duty, amen. If Paul did with fact, the pastoral letters were addressed to correct wrong doctrines in church. And wrong behaviors. Amen? Titus 1 verse 9 after 2 Timothy is Titus. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he, the elder or bishop, may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convi convict those who contradict. It's my duty. Amen. <laughs> Can you praise the name of Jesus? It's my duty. In a right way to preach and to teach you the right interpretation of the word of God. Because false doctrines come out from wrong interpretation of the word of God. That's it. Amen? This duty to take heed of the congregation is not only teaching and preaching, but also visiting and praying for the flock. Go to the book of James, chapter 5. James is before, after Hebrews. Chapter 5, verse 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders or pastors of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Amen. It's a duty. If you got sick, let me know. If anyone is sick in the congregation, let me know. I have gone to visit some of you, even to the hospital, to pray. It's my duty. Amen? Could you understand? That's why when we go to the hospital, we should pray for sick people. It's a commandment. Amen? Pastor, I don't have the gift of healing. I don't have either. Nobody has it. The one who has it is the Holy Spirit. He will operate in some as he wants. But my duty is to pray. Whether people get healed or not. Amen. <laughs> Also, one, the way to take heed of the congregation is by
by recognizing gifted people among the believers. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you. It means the office by prophecy with the laying of the hands of the eldership. Amen. It took place in Acts chapter 16 when Apostle Paul took him for the, to the second journey, missionary journey. You remember? That he, Apostle Paul circumcised Timothy because he, his father was Greek, his mother was a Jew. Amen? And the church, before dismissing Timothy, they recognized that Timothy was gifted and the elders laid hands on him to give him a gift. That gift was the office. He was promoted. Amen? Some people strive because we lay hands on people. That is one duty of the elder. To lay hands on sick and to lay hands on people who are called by the Lord to be promoted. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? It's my duty as a pastor. Hallelujah. Let me see the time. Wow. I am good. 30 minutes. And I am in half of the message. Amen? That is the second duty of the pastors. The first one is to take heed of himself. The second one is to take heed of the congregation. Amen. Later we'll come back to take heed of the congregation for something. Amen. But one of these take of this, how to say, watching or way to be careful with the congregation and himself is to avoid to wrong extremes in the past in the pastorship or eldership or bishop bishop or eldership amen and me as a pastor i have to be very careful amen not to fall into wrong extremes Number one, the first extreme is to have too much control over the flock. And the second extreme is the other, the opposite way, right? To neglect the flock of the Lord. Amen? The balance is to be example. Could you understand? Let's see to have too much control over people. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain by agility, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Not by being lords over them, the flock. Let me tell you something. I don't see this problem here in Trinidad. I have not seen. Maybe there are some who make this terrible mistake. Too much control. But in our Spanish countries, it happened frequently. Amen? Could you understand? In such a way 
that those pastors have committed the mistakes, even interfering in the personal life of the believer, in the sentimental life of the believer. Could you understand? I cannot go beyond it. No. That is not my duty. I have to teach people how to behave in church. As Apostle Paul taught Timothy. Because Apostle Paul left Timothy in Ephesus and said, Teach the congregation how to pray with holy hands, men. Teach the women how to dress with modesty. That is a duty of the pastor. That is not to have too much control over your life. Not. Do you understand? How to behave. How to entertain. How to behave before young ladies. Deal with them as sisters. How to behave with the older people. Deal with them as they were your fathers. Your father. Could you understand? That is not to have too much control. It's a part of my duty. But in our Spanish countries, and even in America, let me tell you something. There is a pastor. I'm, I am able to name the name, right? His name is Guillermo Maldonado. And he manipulated the congregation. Could you understand? In such a way that he did, how to say, he, he challenged the members of the congregation. If you run away from this congregation, you will be cursed. I say to people, if they run away from that congregation, they will be blessed. Because that man is preaching a wrong gospel. He doesn't believe in the coming of Jesus Christ. He is a millionist. He doesn't believe in the rapture. He believes in the prosperity gospel. Run away from that congregation. Could you understand? But he is manipulating the congregation. To have too much control over the congregation. My duty as a pastor is... To suggest the people. Amen. To suggest to people. In personal issues. But concerning spiritual and moral issues within the congregation, I cannot suggest. I have to command. Could you understand? Amen? I cannot go to your house to say, I don't like the curtains of your house. You eat in that way? I don't like in my country we eat in this way. I cannot say that. Amen? Could you understand my brothers and sisters? I have to respect your likes, your manners, your habits, your customs. If they are wrong, I will call you in a wise way to suggest this habit is not well for you. Because instead of spending too much time watching movies in the day when you should come to the house of the Lord, you will be more blessed if you come to the house of the Lord. Are, are you getting the point? Amen? Suggestion instead of to have too much control over you. Amen? The other side or extreme is total neglect. The pastor is just a, a picture in the puppet. Smiling to everyone. And everyone in the church does as they want. You understand? Pastor is so good. He doesn't say anything in church. I love this pastor. Because he allows youth to turn off the lights, to bring the smoke, to jump, to turn
transform the church in a disco. Wow, that, love, that pastor is lovely. First Timothy chapter 3. I wish that everyone in this congregation hear this message, all right? <laughs> First Timothy chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. One who rules, it means the bishop, is demanded who rules his own house well. It means his family. Having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house or to have his children in submission, how will he take care of the church of God? If he does not teach us well in the congregation to be submissive. That is the opposite side. Amen. That's why in the congregation, me as a pastor, I cannot allow you, allow you to eat a snacks in the congregation. To chum, chum, to, to, to chew, chew, chew gum, chew gum. Could you understand, my brothers and sisters? It is not a cinema, my brothers. It is not a theater, my brothers. You are permitted to drink water. Amen? Could you understand my brothers and sisters? <laughs> Excuse me, my brother, but that is my duty as a pastor. You have, if I have to tell you, please, brother, please, sister, don't do that in church. Because if I don't know how to rule my own house, how am I going to have the control in the house of God? Amen? Let me tell you something important. If you go to fancy restaurants, or if you go to important offices, there is a code of dressing. Could you understand my brothers and sisters? If people submit to those codes, why people don't submit to the code of the Bible to dress properly? Because the pastors are nice. Very nice, very lovely. Amen? Could you understand my brothers? Allowing everything in church. That's why you see in those congregations people who don't look that they are born again in such a way that young people come to the watch place of worship and the house of prayer with chapants. Men, speaking about men. That's why it is good when you come to the house of the Lord put a good tie. You have an appointment with God. Dress properly. The house of the Lord is not st uh, stadium. Stadium. Sorry. Could you understand? Amen. It's not the beach. It's not the disco where the women dress, showing their legs and their breasts and everything. No. Is the house of God. You see the requirements in the Old Testament for the high priest to enter into the Holy of Holies. Oh my goodness. And we are a better priesthood. Because they had the opportunity to enter to the Holy of Holies just once in the year. But we, the royal priesthood, have the opportunity to enter to the Holy of Holies in heaven every time we come to church. Amen. But when we go to the other extreme of lack of control or total neglect of the congregation 
pastors allow evil to rule the congregation. Go to the book of Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. Excuse me. Verse 20. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is rebuking this pastor of this congregation. Because this pastor, lack of control of the church, neglect the flock. How? By allowing sin inside of the congregation. Verse 20. Nevertheless, I have few, a few things against you, pastor. Because you allow in your congregation that, a, that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. I, have, I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Not as this church allows sin. Amen? The first enemy in church is sin. Sin in myself and sin within the congregation. That's why I have to control this sin, wickedness in me, and also to control the wickedness in the members. Amen? By helping the members. But that's why the Bible says if a brother has sin, call him apart. Help him. Restore him. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Praise God. Lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to the two other points and then we finish. Amen. Duties of the creation toward the elder. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter... Five. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter five, verse five. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to the elders. Why Apostle Peter says likewise? Because the elders. Submit to their authorities and the main authority is Jesus. Verse 4 says, and when the chief shepherds appear, appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, younger people, submit yourself to the elders. Amen. Because the elder is giving example to the congregation. Notice. Look at me. The elder, Timothy, is giving example to the congregation that he is accountable to Apostle Paul and to the authorities that are over him. Could you understand, my brothers? So, if he is an example of submission, likewise you Younger people, submit yourself to, the, to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. It doesn't mean that you cannot correct me or to help me, to advise me. No, I have to submit. If something is according to the word of God, I hear you. But if it is not, I hear you. But sorry, I prefer to obey God's word. Amen? Submit one to another and be clothed with humility for God's
resists the proud, but, give, but gives play grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt in due time. Amen? Because there are some pastors who don't hear any correction. Amen? Any advice, any uh, counsel. And they curse. And if someone corrects the pastor, that one will be the enemy in the congregation. And after that, that pastor from the pulpit will shoot him with words in the message. Amen? That's not right. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? Number one, the believer is free. Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23, you were bought at price. Do not become a slaves of men. It happened when the, the pastor has, has too much control over the flock. Amen? But also you are free to attend this congregation and to go away to another congregation if you want. You are free. Right? But take heed of yourself, of your salvation. Obey the pastors. Hebrews 13, verse 17, please. That is another duty of the congregation toward the elder. Obey those who rule over you. In the Spanish Bible says, obey your pastors. And be submissive. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. See the point, my brothers? Look at me. This point is very important. Every pastor has to give account to the Lord for every believer. That's why those pastors who just want money from the congregation fleecing the sheep, right? And they, the purpose of them is to enlarge the churches because if they enlarge the churches, more money will come. But God will ask them to render accounts for everyone. Could you understand my brothers? Because I am responsible for your soul. Please obey the elders as those who must give account. That's why I say to you, if you attend this church and then attend another church and then attend another church, God will not ask or demand account for this soul. Because the pastor will say to the Lord, sorry, but it is not my ship. Amen? I have met people here in Trinidad. Lovely people. And once I met a lady, and she was talking to a guy, and she said, Pastor, God bless, come, come. I said, wow, time without seeing this uh, sister. God bless. Let me introduce a friend. This one is my pastor. I said, I am? <laughs> Months without coming to the congregation. Wow. You see the point, my brother? Amen? Of course, I smile. I said, okay, nice to meet you, Pastor Alex. And then I dismiss. I said, but this woman, does he come to the congregation? Amen? Another woman said to me that, uh, that I was her pastor, but she doesn't attend this congregation. Because they don't obey and be submissive. I will not be accountable, accountable before God for that soul. I will be accountable to God for the ones who are obeying and submissive. Submissive. Amen? Can you praise the name of Jesus? 
That's why, look at me, my brothers. You are free. If you want to attend another pastor, go, attend. But obey this word. Amen? Be submissive to that pastor. And don't run from church to church because you run the risk by to hear wrong doctrines. Can you praise the name of Jesus? I am not compelling you to remain in this church. You are free, my brother. Let me re remind you, you are free. But if you want to hear another pastor and to go to another church, make a decision. Make a decision for your well-being, but not drink of two or three waters at the same time. Because every pastor must be accountable for every ship. Amen? Hallelujah. The other duty is to honor the pastors. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. You like the message? <laughs> Let the elders who rule well, who rule well, because he is not ruling well, be counted worthy of double honor. Especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. If the pastor is not really well, don't honor that pastor. On the contrary, exhort that pastor. Amen? But the ones who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Don't disrespect that pastor. Amen? Amen? Okay, I'm going to finish with the last point. I don't want to dip in that part, Amy, because if, if I do it, I look like, uh, you know, honor me, honor me. <laughs> Some pastor take that verse of the Bible, you know, and 1 Thessalonians, uh, because the Bible says, verse 18, the, the how to honor. Double honor. How to honor? For the scripture says you shall not muscle, muscle an ox while it treats out the grain. And the labor is worthy of his wages. You know, it speaks about material things, but I am not going to dip in that point, right? Amen? Let's go to the last point. Believers without submission follow the way of Cain. It's hard, this part. Amen? I left this part at the end in order that you could understand why. The risk when a person in church does not obey and is not submissive. Amen? We run the risk to follow the way of Cain, the one who killed Abel. I'm going to show you Jude, chapter 1, the only chapter. Jude is before Revelation. Verse 11. Woe well, to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Amen. The way of Cain. What was the way of Cain? In this case, is addressed by rejecting authorities. Remember Genesis chapter 4 verse 9. God called Cain after killing Abel. What was the, what was the attitude of Cain before God? Because this God said, where is thy brother? Abel and Cain disrespect God, saying, Am I my brother's keeper? Wow. Could you understand? When the ones who are not submissive to the authorities, they disrespect their pastors. Could you understand, my brothers and sisters? That's why the context of Jude 11 
Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Read the context. context. Verse 8 says that these people who are not submissive to the authorities, they follow the way of Cain. It means by despising or rejecting authorities. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of the dignitaries. Look at me, please. That's why on the internet I have gotten preachers who don't subject to anyone and speak evil of pastor of pastors. Because they reject to be in authority. Could you understand my brothers and sisters? Verse 9 says, Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, they did not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Verse 10 says, But these speak evil of whatever do not know, and whatever they know, naturally like the brute beasts. In these things they corrupt themselves, because they reject authorities. Could you understand? For them, no pastors are good for them. That is the way of Cain. When someone rejects a pastor because the pastor is correcting him in love, helping him, amen? When they reject the pastor, after doing it, they become spiritual vagabonds. It's, it's hard to say that, right? What was the consequence when Cain rejected God. Genesis chapter 4, please. Verse 12. Hallelujah. Look the consequence. When you came till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. I'm finishing, right? Amen? It, has, it is a curse. When you see people from church to church, they run from church to church, not because the Lord led them, not because the Lord said to them, come out from those evil places, not. It's because of the curse of Cain, you will be vagabond. And why Cain was vagabond? Because he didn't forgive his brother on the country, kill him, and in his heart there was hatred. And most of people who run from church to church are hating someone, and they run offended with the pastor and with some believers. Can you praise the name of Jesus? I say to the brothers yesterday, I cannot control the congregation. The congregation is free to go to anywhere. But how people go to other places, that is the problem. If they leave the congregation by saying to the pastor, Pastor, thank you for the teaching these years, but I have to go to another place. Or I disagree with you in this, but still I love you, Pastor. I cannot hate you. Thank you. Okay. I understand. God bless. May the Lord bless you. But if the member of the church doesn't say anything and get angry and go away to another congregation with the pastor, that person is affected with a root of bitterness. Could you understand? And that's why these people are affected. Amen? That's why Apostle Jude 
the brother of Jesus said, they chose the way of Cain. Vagabonds. Go to Jude, please. It is important that part. Amen. Jude, verse 12. Remember, verse 11 says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Verse 12 says, They are spot in your love feasts, when they feast with you with, without fear, serving only themselves. And notice, the way of Cain is this. They are vagabonds. They are clouds without water carried about the winds. Take that word. Clouds without water carried by the winds. Amen? It means they don't have stability. Amen? If there is a new wind, that new wind carried him to another place. What is the wind that the Holy Spirit means in the Bible? Doctrines. Doctrines that please the hearers. Amen? But Apostle Paul says, I, I am not I'm a pleaser man. A man, a man pleaser, right? Could you understand? And that's why me as a pastor, the duty of me as a pastor is to perfect the saints in order that they grow and reach the stature and measure of Jesus. But if the the believer does not subject and hear one message, message here and then in the other place that person doesn't grow and will be an easy prey for the winds of doctrines go to the book of Ephesians please and keep up in Jude amen Ephesians chapter 4 Verse 11, and he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the defying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith, of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, a perfect man to the measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting you see the word of God you see the word of God that's why you have to be very careful what you watch in, in internet, in TV, and you hear in the radio station. And when you make the mistake to go to somewhere to receive messages, you will not grow. That's why I disagree in my heart with that pastor. I love him, the lecturer. I said, no, that is not right. The member of the congregation has to grow. Amen? If the member of the congregation is going from one ch to church to another church and from one event to another event, what kind of word that person is going to receive? He will be like a cloud, empty cloud without water carried by the winds. That is the way of Cain. Amen? Let us finish. Jude 13, raging waves of the sea, forming up their own shame. And take this word, wandering the stars, from whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. In astronomy and cosmology, look at me, the science that study the stars and galaxies select a 
type of stars in the universe. There are different types. But some stars, you know, one star is the sun. If you see the sun in the morning, it is our star. Amen? This is compound of nine planets rotating around the gravity of the sun, right? But this sun is subject to the galaxy core gravity. Could you understand? In our galaxy, the Milky Way, we have 100,000 millions of stars and we are just one, the sun. And this planet in the third orbit is rotating around the sun. It's subject to the sun. If the planet goes out of that area of rotation, it will be destroyed. Amen? Could you understand? In order to preserve life, the planet rotates around the sun in the third orbit. In, by his, in, in its own orbit is one day. But around the sun, just one round is one year. Amen? But the sun as well is subject to the galaxy core. You understand? But in cosmology or astronomy, there are some stars who are not subject to the main core of the galaxy. And they are wandering stars. And when a star explodes, if the star was big or was close to the core of the galaxy, it makes a black hole. The black hole transforms the matter into energy. It's a, 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 a nuclear bomb as well and it absorbs or takes into the interior of the black hole everything in the, in the space. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? The first victims of the black holes are the wandering stars. Amen. Can you praise the name of Jesus? Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Amen. <laughs> it is the word of God, my brothers and sisters. Amen. We are not empty clouds. Amen. We are not wandering stars. We have to be subject one to another. Me to my superiors. My superiors to their superiors. Even the local international board in our denomination are subject one to another. When someone, even the president, is not doing right, the, local, the international board removed him. There is someone who was removed in our denomination. Nobody has head. The head of the church is Christ. As I submit to my superiors, you submit to the leader. And I submit to you as well. Submit one to another. But I cannot be a wandering star. And you should not be a wandering star. Otherwise, the black hole of condemnation will swallow up. Amen. Amen. The only ones in the early church who used to go from one place to another or vagabonds are the ones who were in sin. Chapter 5 of book of Acts verse 13. I am not manipulating you with this message. Please, don't take me wrong. If you one day feel to go from this congregation, you are free to go. But don't go angry. Don't go with a root of bitterness. Heal that. I respect your decision. 
Amen? Chapter 5. You know, I have looked for the ones who have gone from this congregation because I knew that they went with something in their hearts. I have embraced them. I said to them, Sister, I love you. I respect your decision, no problem. But I still love you. Amen? One who went away from this congregation said, let us be clear. I know that you went because you get offended for something. Please forgive me. I made a mistake. Amen? Attend another congregation, be subject to that pastor, but let us heal that bitterness. Amen? Could you understand? And I love that person. That person could love me as well. Amen? I am not taking this message to manipulate a congregation or any one of you. Not. You are free. Book of Acts chapter 5 verse 13 Bible says that after Ananias and Sapphira died because of their sin in the congregation, remember the congregation where everyone was of one heart and one soul, right? But Ananias and Sapphira were not. And verse 13 says, yet none of the rest, it means the rest, the group of people in sin, like Ananias and Sapphira, they join them. It means the early church were in the power of God. Amen? That's why people don't attend a church. They prefer to run. Amen? Because they are in sin. Amen? And the clarification and the is if me as a pastor or any pastor is not doing right and the church become evil, that member of the congregation has liberty and right to run away. Revelation 18 verse 4 Bible says, Come out from among them. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out from Babylon, my people, lest you share in her sins unless you receive her plagues. Amen? On Psalm 92, I finish with this, this verse of the Bible. Too much information, right? But I prefer to say, if you want to flourish, to grow, to reach the likeness and image of Jesus, that is the purpose of God in you. Amen? Bible says, Psalm 92, verse 12, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted, not the ones who are running or jumping from one to church to a church. No, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. Amen. This is my message for today. Let's stand up.